Hello everyone, uh, today is the HJC versus MOS game. Uh, I'm excited to be casting. Uh, my name is Kai Uehara and today I'll be casting with... My name is Jerry Lee. Alright, so we're going to be heading right into the pick and ban phase right now. Uh, we're going to be seeing the Aurelia and uh, Jin ban coming from the blue side. This is a very smart decision because that's two of uh team mos's one tricks i believe because uh you know namesake wise uh, it's uh high noon aurelia's aurelia and i do to my knowledge know that uh yonka does definitely like to play uh Jin when it is open but you know Jin being a very strong pick at the moment uh as well as her kind of one trick it is a very smart band coming out from team hjc um but on the red side, we're going to be seeing the Victor and Darius bands. I'm not too familiar with uh, Team HJC's um, champion pools, but I can definitely see that a Darius would be a smart ban uh, because the top laner's name is El Dunker, so, you know, it does make sense. Uh, however, we're going to be seeing the third bands coming out from both teams being uh, Seraphine and Talia, and the uh, first pick on the blue side is going to be Kane, and now we are waiting on the red side. Any thoughts on this, Jerry? I think the first pick, Kane, was a pretty smart choice because Kane has two forms, pretty versatile. He can really go against any team comp, so that was just a safe first pick to see what that red team is going to counter with. I see. Well, we can see now that they've countered with the uh, Hecarim pick. I know in the past that uh, Chris, or sorry, Quiss, uh, as his name says, w does like to play uh, Hecarim. You know, Hecarim, definitely that solo carry kind of 1v9 champion but we'll definitely see in this game whether or not uh quiz will be able to put that to the uh or put his skills to the test and is able to carry his team or not i do know that he in the past he has complained about hecarim's clear being slow but i'm not sure if that is a mechanical uh mishap or if that is just a fact can you uh elaborate on this more jerry i think Hecarim's clear to the average player seems very fast because obviously he has that Q AOE, he can spam it a lot, it's pretty healthy. Mm -hmm. But if a new player tries to, you know, they're just trying to start, well, they're just trying to learn Hecarim and they're not familiar with how to keep your like Q stacks up, when to use your W, when to smite, it can be a bit slow. I see. Okay, so maybe that's what Chris was talking about beforehand. Um, but we're definitely going to be moving in and seeing that uh, both of the third picks are going to be locked in on both sides. For blue side, it's going to be Mordekaiser and Zoe, and for red side, it's going to be Kaisa and Camille. I, to my knowledge, I know that the top lane on Team MOS does prefer to play, I think, Camille, Aurelia, and I think they played Renekton the last game, but they did, mm -hmm. in fact, lose the last game. So I'm not sure they want to go for that Renekton pick once more. Uh, does seem that Camille is definitely the safer pick here for Team MOS. Um, and I know that um, although uh, Yonka's um, Jin was in fact banned, uh, the Kaisa, on, or Kaisa's Yonk, excuse me, um, Yonka's Kaisa is definitely not um, something that should be overlooked. Uh, I so think very that good right pick. now, Red Team is probably going to draft the Galio. I because see. they probably need some CC tank support to round their team together, and that's why the enemy team banned Leona. Mm. Okay, wow, they so... opted for the Diana. Okay, well, that's actually that's actually a new development, because I have never seen X-May actually on Diana, and I know he is going to be playing mid lane, unless they're going to be going for some sort of lane swap here. I'm not too sure, but Very interesting. I highly I doubt it. I thought they would go for the camille Galio combo and just add a Hecarim on top. Perhaps. Maybe they're going for Galio last pick here. I'm not sure. But, Maybe. I don't know. Because it does... Yeah, because Seraphine was banned as well as Leona. So, they're not... They don't have too much room with the supports. Although, like, Thresh and um, Nautilus. Nautilus are open. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see why they would need to do that. Because Zoe... If they were to hook Zoe, she's a bit too slippery. I guess pulling a Caitlyn would be nice. But, you know, Mordecai would probably just death realm it. Um, Whoever like is poses the greatest threat to Caitlyn, and oh, yeah, we're actually going to be seeing the Nautilus, the Nautilus. Yeah, on the blue side, 
Potentially um, going for the Thresh to maybe adapt to a more peel style play. You have the slow, you have the flay, you have the lantern. That is true. Although I do think that they probably are just going to go for the Galio because although what you're saying is correct, I think that with Galio, not only can they um, provide a decent amount of peel, but oh, okay, never mind. That's a Thresh pick. Yeah, there's a Thresh pick. I guess you were right then. I was going to say that um, even though like Thresh does have a um, more, I don't know, versatile kit when it comes to peeling, Galio does offer some while not offering as much as uh, Thresh, however. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Any closing thoughts before we head into game? Not really. Yeah, I guess... Uh... I mean, we have some interesting team comps. Not team comps that you would see in pro play, but certainly Yeah, well, are. this is uh, <laughs> this is not uh, necessarily pro play, but right, it is uh, right. a tournament, so yeah. Yeah, sure.
All right. Currently in the loading screen. Can you notice anything interesting? Uh, um, I'm looking. Oh, okay. I can see that uh, Quiz has opted for the flash on Hecarim. Um, Certainly not... very interesting, you yeah. know? Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Um, Neither am I. But I don't know. Maybe maybe it's some sort of hidden in a hidden tech, tech that knows? we don't know about. Maybe it's from the Koreans. Maybe, maybe. Imported strategies. Uh, but anyways, as we're going to be uh, heading on into game right now, um, what I am kind of hoping for this game is those really huge team fights because I can see that both teams definitely have some uh, pretty explosive potential when it comes to team fighting, especially with the... Uh, I'm very excited to see how this um, Diana will perform during team fights because I know um if camille gets a good r onto perhaps maybe a zoe or a caitlin um they could possibly just completely uh annihilate a team fight but what we are going to be seeing here is blue side going to be um trying to go for that red invade perhaps but they did mm -hmm. get spotted by the camille um so i think they're just going to be possibly uh just I think they're just going to be heading all to their lanes because I know that Kane doesn't need a leash because he usually starts Raptors. Am I uh, correct? You can start Raptors, you can start Wolves, or you can start Red. You can really start anything on Kane. Right. Yeah. Oh, uh, right now okay, I'm looking so... at the different team comps. I'm seeing yeah. that Cambi has a very engaged and disengaged team comp. Yeah. But what I'm seeing from Mosscrop is that their team is just all in. You have to commit. If, that is true. Let's yeah. say the Hecarim's going in, the Camille has to go in, Thrash has to go in, Kaisa has to R in. That's true. Definitely I'm true. I'm excited to see how team fights are going to play out. Yeah. We didn't see any um, sort of, I don't know, invade action happening. There was something bobbling at the beginning, but uh, that was quickly diffused by. Um, both the top laners so yeah we're just gonna be going on into normal laning phase but as i say that uh quiz gonna be forcing out the flash from kane in fact uh getting that cheeky invade in it, i don't know it i think kane got his uh red buff though correct not sure cannot say i mean he does have four cs so so yeah okay did, i'm gonna yeah. assume he did yep Yeah. I, I don't know, like, when, when, um, I know Quiss definitely is, uh, out of the box thinker when it comes to League of Legends. Definitely, um, definitely. Yeah, I think we can all agree if, uh, any of us have seen his peer, oh, I'm gonna be heading to the pause here, but what I was, as I was saying, uh, if any of you have seen his previous games, he definitely has some questionable, uh, th questionable thought process and uh, decision making when it comes to League of Legends. But, you know, sometimes he is not a 0% uh, win rate player. He definitely does have a win rate when it comes to uh, solo and duo queue. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, we cannot completely discredit his strategies. Uh, but we're going to be seeing this pause as I believe High Noon Aurelia is going to be reconnecting. Um, uh, yeah. Any thoughts about how this game is going to be turning out, Jerry? The results of this game? Not sure. I think it's a little bit early to tell. Really tall, okay. Well, I don't know. I think right before High Noon Aurelia disconnected, there we saw a bit of that bullying. Yeah, and once again, a bit of the bullying coming out from uh, Mordecai's right now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, definitely gonna be something tough for Camille to combat unless she gets a gank from Hecarim. I don't see how she's gonna be able to 1v1 because I believe whenever is she as long as she keeps taking trades like that, she's just gonna be at a health disadvantage every time she tries to go in and she'll definitely lose that so yeah, right now, I'm not, what I'm i don't is, see will mordekaiser opt for the seeker's arm guard brambo vest ninja tabby build just you a know, three armor item straight off the bat that is a, i don't know i i don't think so to be honest i really don't think that's what's gonna happen i'm pretty sure they're just gonna build normally but 
Uh, I don't know. Who, who, we don't know yet. We don't know. It's very early on in the game. Um, we don't know like what these players are thinking right now. We are not in their uh, voice calls right now. But yeah, we're just going to be seeing a pretty normal start here. Nothing too crazy happening. Yeah, just both players farming. But as I say, the Hector King is going back to the, the gang, stunning him. And misses Camille the W. Not actually gets pulled hitting back the in. QW or EW, my mistake. This is a first blood. Flashing this is a first blood. Camille. Getting the first blood, Little he's dead. This, this is a double kill. This is double kill if I've ever seen it. Hecarim is going to be yes, desperately for fighting for his life. Hecarim does fall. Gets the double kill. Right. <laughs> does fall to the Marduk Geyser, excuse me, and giving him two kills to start off this game. Right as I was saying that things were dying down, uh, Hecarim just decides to gank him, but Only unfortunately, it's double kill. And what we're seeing right now is Marduk lane engaging, forcing the flash out of the trash. Um, the we can out. see that Camille, I think. Yes, was for forced to run away there. Um, she unfortunately did not connect the EW combo mm -hmm. onto the uh, Mordekaiser when she was trying to engage. I'm not sure if that was the best engage coming out from Hecarim, um, mm. but, you know. So we... two things to note there. Number one, if Hecarim maybe had a Knight or a Ghost to get an extra damage in, maybe he would have killed Hecarim? Or Mordekaiser, but yeah, we're gonna I mean, be seeing. Sorry, oh, yeah, putting yeah. that flash to use, but no, he this is, is gonna be falling to the Zoe. By the mid laner. This yep. seems like a repeat of last game. I don't know if you guys saw, but Christopher last game did gank the top lane and lost first blood as well. Yep. Very interesting decision making. Yeah, we're Maybe. just gonna be seeing. Uh, Zoe just completely abusing that W. She's just going to be storing up those summoner spells and just completely stacking damage with her Q. Um, but so I was wrong about the armor build. You see yeah. Mordecai there having a leeching leer already. Yeah, I, well, I mean, he did get a double kill, so he is extremely mm -hmm. ahead right now. So I don't think he needed to offer the uh, build you, did, you mentioned prior. Yeah, so. definitely. Kane is now up a farm. Not a farm, sorry, camp. Yeah. You know, what I want to see right now is this gank as actually going to be working. Hecarim going to be connecting that onto the uh, Nautilus and, in fact, taking the kill for himself. He definitely needed that to get back into the game because I know that Hecarim is pretty high variant. Um, but as we're, as I'm talking right now, I'm going to interrupt Potential myself. solo call in the mid lane. X yep. May takes down <laughs> It was Zoe. definitely a potential and definitely confirmed solo kill by X May. This is definitely big for Team Mosscrop. Team Mo if Team Mosscrop can get this, um, Diana fed, I can definitely see them winning this game. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be up to top lane and, uh, Mosscrop's bot lane to probably pull uh pick up some slack and uh pull their weight because as we see if we look at the scoreboard um team hjc is definitely um much more better off um than the majority of team moss Grub. so um we're definitely gonna see team moss Grub trying to pull themselves back up so that they can possibly bring this game back. Because although not at too much of a disadvantage, they are at a bit of a disadvantage uh, gold-wise and uh, just lane priority-wise as well. Um, but yeah, I am... I don't know. What I would like to see is um, Camille getting just that... Because not, I'm not necessarily like seeing this Camille pop off at the moment. But what she can do is definitely lock down those valuable targets like uh, Zoe or Caitlyn and uh, just using her R just to lock them out of the fight and possibly just get a pick on them early and uh, letting the Diana and Kaisa just completely demolish and possibly the Hecarim as well because we did see Hecarim pick up a kill in the bot lane against the Nautilus. So definitely, uh, definitely something along those lines should be going through Team Mosscrop's head if they do want to take this game. Um, but yeah, right now we're just going to be seeing a pretty normal laning phase. I don't see any like crazy invades happening at the moment, but, um, I don't know. I think possibly, um, Hecarim 
might gank top again. I do see him passing a bit, but I believe he just locked down the scuttle. I don't hold think on, he wants on. to start the uh, Rift Herald just yet, but we are going to be seeing Team HJS moving on that uh, Cloud Drake, I believe. Um, that's very, yeah. oh, that's very interesting. Kane still has not back yet. Yeah, Kane has not back. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen Kane. He does have an assist, but he hasn't been involved in too many of um, too many of the crazy fights that have happened yet. So I don't think I don't know. I do think he should have backed, but I don't think it was like completely, you know, necessary. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But uh, so yeah. Off from mid lane, Hepcrum gets hit by the E and is forced to back off. Yep, so, I don't know, what, I think Team, I, you know, I have talked a lot about Team MLS because they are definitely behind in this game, but I think what Team um, HJC needs to do to win is just completely, you know, uh, dominate the laning phase, because that's actually what they're doing right now, as I say that, the Mordekaiser oh, flash cues flash onto cue. the Camille, and uh, locks in a soul kill, but we're oh, going to be seeing XJ possibly getting lane. a gank. Walks oh, right into the trap and presses ultimate. Walk straight into the Kalen Strash trap. Able to save the flash as he Hits the, the hook Nautilus. On the Nautilus is going to be falling here, I believe. Two X May. Another kill for X May. Another kill for bot lane. Was that um, worth it? We blew the flash of the mid laner, ignite ultimate, the flash of the support for one kill. Yeah, but we're going to be seeing X May actually falling here to um, Zoe, the enemy mid laner. But X May decides to possibly go in. setting up something for the bot lane right now. Bot lane going to be. Because it does have the ult, does have the flash. Yep, it nice does no have all of that up. But no, I don't think anything's gonna happen there. We're gonna be seeing a 1v1 happening right between the junglers. X. Christopher has a lead. Chris has definitely got this. I don't see how he messes this up. There we go. Okay. And that's why he that's the Chris we like to see. Chris that is why he flash autoing the cane for the kill and getting the. Um... Oh, wait, no, I'm mistaken. He does not get the uh, Rift Herald. He has to. He's forced to back off because. Mordekaiser does definitely hold that lane priority in the top lane, and he's going to be just passing down to prevent him from completing the objective. Although Kane did fall, um, de definitely doing some damage control, but we're going to be seeing the support Thrash getting hit by the Q, uh, Q and E combo coming out from the Zoe. Zoe is just going to be taking another kill, perhaps, but Kaisa fighting for her life, dodging the trap, getting ignited. She's going to be farming that wave so that she doesn't get killed, but she does snap on the trap. Trap is not enough to kill her though. She is going to be getting out of that one alive. That is you know, some crazy stuff coming out from the uh, A lot of people have just been stepping into Kaylin traps. Is there a bug where the trap is invisible right now? I do not know. I don't know. Oh, we saw X May. We saw X May doing it and we saw. Um, Let's see if you can pick Paldo. up. Gets hit by the E once more. And Chris is in the middle of three people right now. Kane I don't see how he gets out of this situation. I don't party. believe he has R right now. He's just going to be falling to the Nautilus, the Zoe, and the Kane. Kane definitely going to be getting that. Sweet, sweet kill onto the enemy jungler here, but we're going to be seeing X may taken down three platings. In fact, um, a lot four? more platings than no, the Zoe has, but the Zoe good. has been, you know, making a lot of plays around the map. So definitely not um, being useless at the moment, uh, which is very good for Team HJS. But back to what I was saying um, quite a while ago, in fact, is what I think Team HJS needs to do to win this game is probably just, you know, keep the leads that they do have. The uh, Top lane, Mordekaiser is definitely ahead. He already has the finished Rift Maker, and he's building some armor. We can see with that cloth that could possibly be building into a Tabi because he does have his boots. Um, but you know, right now I believe HJS or HJC, my bad, um, definitely just wants to keep these leads that they do have and uh, closing out the game. But um, yeah, let's take a look at some items here. We have Mordekaiser finishing his first Mythic. For everyone else in the game, he's a menace right now. He's away hitting the bubble. Yep. Big Q. Now, what Zoe did here was he opted for the Ruby Crystal instead of the Dark Steel. What do you think about that? Um, I'm not sure. Because, you know, although I do know a bit about this game, you definitely know more than I do. So, um, I don't know. Like, I don't have too many, too many thoughts about it because I have not played against a lot of Zoe's in my time. Um, but I don't think it's a necessarily bad buy because, mm -hmm. I don't know, she is very ahead at the moment. So I think she has a little right. bit of breathing room to like experiment with some different items. Yeah, because, maybe that extra you know, bit of health could save her from the next headroom yeah, gank. Yeah, exactly. Because she is definitely, one of the main problems that she has is she is pretty squishy, so. 
Definitely. Uh, definitely not, not, not the worst buy. Definitely not the worst buy. Top lane tower going to be falling. Yep. We're going to be seeing actually now. Hector, oh my god, predicting the Kaylin E getting her caught out. Going to be taking the kill onto her. Chris taking just one extra tower shot. Taking two extra tower shots. Tower shots but Ball he does fall to the Nautilus. The Nautilus. It to is two up. kills for two the enemy. Our He's team two for one in the bot lane. Yes, we just saw a two kill, two for um, two for one in the bot lane right now. But it's going to be Zoe picking up the lane, possibly getting a kill. But I don't think she wants to take this 1v2. Thresh almost finding the hook right there, but he is not going to be connecting it, unfortunately. X-Mate does actually seem to be piling down to the bot lane. They could possibly be setting up a uh, dive, but no, I do think they're just going to be setting up for this Ocean Dragon because mm -hmm. previously Team Camby did actually uh, take the Cloud Drake, so I don't believe that they want to give up this soul, but X-Mate going to be going on to the uh, Zoe right now, flashing and getting that major shutdown off of the Zoe. The Teemo emoji. Yep. Just completely destroying that Zoe, completely caught her off guard. But we're going to be seeing Mordekaiser with his 3-0 score. Going to be moving into the Dragon, because this is definitely a fight brewing here. We need to see possibly a Camille coming down. I I do believe, yes, yeah, she does have TP, but I don't see any good wards that she can TP to. There is one in the Dragon Pit that Team Moscrob holds, I believe. But um, yeah, I don't think that's exactly where she wants to TP. But we're going to be seeing... Just Mordekaiser kind of frontlining. Um, definitely a fight brewing, but it does get it's caught out by the Thresh Cube. Not going to be taking it in, though. This is definitely... Something so is definitely going to happen here. We're just seeing... I'm not sure what the Camille is doing. I think she may just be trying to close the um, gold gap between her and Mordekaiser, but I'm pretty sure she wants to TP to this fight because it's definitely happening right now. We're going to be seeing Mordekaiser death realming the Diana. Diana not killing him yet but the dragon is going to be going to team Camby. Camby not finding too much deaths but is going to be finding that kill onto the camille as well as on the moss crop side as uh, the diana excuse me that's three it's deaths on team moss crop side um the bot lane is the only ones are the only ones left alive excuse me and are just gonna be possibly i don't know resetting there is not much they can do right now um I think that what they want to do right now is possibly just defend this uh, bot lane tower because they don't want to lose too many uh, objectives at the moment because they did just lose that uh, ocean dragon. It was very noticeable that, that last ocean dragon fight. I saw Christopher just charging in, no fear in his eyes whatsoever. Yes, that is time. definitely one of his token strategies as mm -hmm. a League of Legends player. It might have oh, worked the flash is going to be actually probable. forced out from the Nautilus. I don't know if he needed to flash that. He could, I believe he didn't have enough time to sidestep it, but um, I don't know if he needed to flash that one out. I guess he just wants to play it safe, but Hecarim going to be engaging onto both the Zoe and the Hecarim, or Mordekaiser, excuse me, getting that <laughs> shutdown off of the Mordekaiser, making that his first death. Nice shutdown, going to Christopher's pockets, um, but it's going to be Thresh 1v2ing and having to run away from the balling tower. Um, yeah, it's just going to be... I, what I'm seeing right now is just a back and forth between both of these teams. But, um, yeah, I don't... I don't know. For every every strike that uh, Team Gambi is doing, or making against Team Moscrop, Team Moscrop is definitely striking back with either shutdowns or objectives. So, definitely kind of a uh, back and forth at the moment. Right now, I think the shopkeeper is very happy at the Nautilus's purchase of a first item, Spirit Visage. Definitely yes, very I interesting. actually see that right now. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess he was just saving up his money. I don't know how he got that much. He does have two kills, um, but he does have two kills. Instead of opting for a locket. Yeah, he's gonna be. I don't know. Maybe he just wants that because I believe. Like, what he was aiming for with that buy is just some more health on his team because um, I can see that Kane is probably going to go for red form this game. Um, but he's not quite that tanky yet because he just bought his Gore Drinker. But X-May possibly going to be falling here, forcing the flash out of the Zoe. But the Zoe does take the kill with the EQ combo coming out from her. I believe that was her actual flash as well, so she's going to be having her flash down for the next little while, but not too much of a problem for Zoe. As we know, she can store 
an infinite amount of summer spells Nautilus but right now it's going to be thresh getting queued by the nautilus nautilus going to be engaging isn't alone right you now are engaging for the forcing the flash kill. out of the hecarim or beautiful hecarim, excuse me thresh thresh going to be engaging back in helping us AD carry out does kaisa. not get the they shot blocked by the, the block, kaisa but, but the kaisa is block. going to be picking up that nice kill onto nautilus nautilus is going to be setting it up possibly for red form and the gale force e flash q combo from caitlin caitlin is in so deep right now she is front lighting like crazy but it's going to be chris running away with his ultimate staying safe and peeling for his ad carry 80 the ad carries on both sides have definitely a nice amount of items um but that was pretty big engage coming out from the caitlin caitlin e Gale forcing and flashing just for that uh, Kaisa, but Kaisa was able to run away by utilizing her flash as well. Um, but it's going to be, again, Caitlyn running for her life, using the heal, but she does get shut down by the Hecarim as long, uh, along with the Diana. Diana and Hecarim probably just looking to get out of this situation right now because it's going to be Zoe so coming right into the with... Trap again, into the e and is now oh asleep. my Let's see what wakes goodness. Him up. Okay, that's a shutdown okay. for Team Camby. I don't know what Chris was doing. Um, but yeah, he just gave them a free shutdown. So, not sure about that one, Chris. Uh, oh, but it's gonna be Thresh we'll get that Q. Nice Q by the Thresh, but it's gonna be not it's enough not to keep his AD carry safe. Death Realm is gonna be being caught by the Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser is gonna wow, be exploding that, that Kai'Sa. Black Kai'Sa, Kai'Sa skull. maybe getting the kill, but no, it's gonna be the assist. But it's actually nothing, nothing for the Kai'Sa or the Thresh today. It's gonna be a 3v, uh, two, or actually 2v2 right now because Camille is gonna be pulling up to the scene. Looking to just get out here. Kane and Zoe are gonna be together on this one, but they're just gonna be running away because I don't think that's a situation that they'd like to pursue. Uh, because Dragon is gonna be up in just a couple of seconds right now. So they're gonna be opting towards that because they did definitely just get a pretty big pick on the Kaisa. Um Mordecai's were just uh, able to completely annihilate her in his uh, death realm, just completely popping her with the Q and the autos. Um, but yeah, I do believe Team Moscarp is going to be having to give this there dragon up unless Chris is going to be None pulling some crazy dragon steel this. shenanigans. But no, he's going to be getting hit it's by the Zoe E, getting completely chunked. This is definitely another dragon, but X-Men going to be flashing in for flashing. the big engage. Red Chris stealing the dragon. stealing the dragon with the hard, this be hard spike combo. Camille going to be getting that big shutdown. Gets oh, hit no, by the Nautilus Q, but it's just Nautilus as well as Caitlyn, El Donker does get the shutdown on the Crystal. Another double kill for the Mordekaiser. The Mordekaiser the on his own. Potential. Triple kill. He's going completely insane right now. He's going to be getting a quadra kill. quadra kill. Oh my goodness! It's the Penna. He's looking for the Penna. X May is going to be running for his life at the moment. X May definitely wanting, excuse me, to run out of this situation. But Caitlyn is definitely looking for her. Um. Is Kaylin going to be able to find her? No, I don't think so. But that was extremely huge coming out from the Mordecai. They're picking up a quadra kill. Although Chris was able to steal the dragon, that's not enough for them to win the team fight because Mordecai just went insane. He just got a quadra kill in the middle Mordecai's of everything. Mordecai absolutely Aspen outskilled Moscrow. Let's be honest here. Completely just, ex just made them explode. But... Decimated them. Yeah. You know, that that's exactly what i was talking about you know he definitely kept his lead in the top lane he just kept snowballing and this is what we see we see a quadra kill basically going solo into team moscow and just completely annihilating them mm -hmm. i do think that dragon still was very good because it gives moscow some breathing time if you're on the enemy having three dragons and it's past 20 minutes and they have the constant threat of baron hold on fight breaking out here Right breaking out here, yep. It's gonna be uh, both the support and the mid lane on Team Mossgrap uh, mm -hmm. falling, in fact, but... As I was um, saying, it does give them some breathing time, although they did give a Quadra over to Mordekaiser. That is true. So, you know, some downtime right now. They're just pushing mid. Yep. It's gonna be... I looking extremely grim for Team Moscrop. I don't see how they're gonna be getting themselves out of this one mm -hmm. if they pull some crazy team fight tactics out right now. But it's not gonna be enough because okay, Kaisa is going to be combo. getting completely shut down by the Zoe. M7 mastery flash, full BM. Oh my goodness, this is not looking good for Team Moscrop. They're at actually all. backing off right now. Potentially looking for a Baron. Now I'd like to take the time right now. I don't think any team's gonna really do anything at this point. 
I think blue team's just gonna look for a reset here after pushing top wave, unless they look for another fight here. But no, it's just gonna be what I'm Potentially seeing constantly is just this Zoe is completely chunking down Team Moskrop. But uh, I don't know, they just can't do anything. But Chris is gonna be looking for that big engage, getting a three man fear. He's gonna be going, helping his back line, in fact, with the Nautilus. Nautilus, I don't know what he's doing in the front line, but he is going to be actually falling. Uh, Camille getting the big E, wow. but he's gonna be getting slept. Oh my goodness, Mordecai's just going huge again, completely destroying everyone at Mordecai the is he's absolutely just going unkillable. insane. Gets the pull onto the Kai'Sa. Kai'Sa gonna be flash healing away. He's gonna be getting locked on by the Caitlyn. Caitlyn is gonna be getting that nice chunk of health down, but I don't think they have enough speed to catch this Kai'Sa. Kai'Sa is gonna be completely alone right now to defend the base. I don't believe Blue even needs to reset here. They could possibly just push for the end as we speak. Um, Definitely. But... Yeah, that was just crazy. I while I was talking, I saw Kane get a three or three or four man knockup with his W. They just completely lined up for him, but, but I wasn't able to cast that because I was would have been talking over myself a bit too much. But um, yeah, it's gonna be the team blue or sorry, team can be um gonna be just resetting. I don't think they wanted to play it too risky and push at the end there. That would have definitely been an overstay. Um, but yeah, what I think they're just gonna be doing now is team can be is just gonna be picking up that Baron pretty easily unless uh we see some stealing shenanigans again coming out from christopher um but yeah they definitely have control over the map right now especially team fight wise right now either support i haven't seen them be all too impactful of course i could be wrong but you know i'm seeing thrash i'm seeing nautilus both hook and gauge champions and they kind of remind me of um do you know this player named B. Kwan? Of course, everyone's heard of B. Kwan. Of course, he is a Blitzcrank god, and you know he really made these hook champions interesting. But oh, blue team going oh, to the Baron right wait, now. Wait, wait, playing the Baron. Mordekaiser Kaiser has three trillion IQ. He just death realmed Chris over the wall, so he couldn't skill. Mm -hmm. Not sure if that means three trillion IQ, but it definitely means a basic understanding of the game. Okay, man. I'm trying to hype this guy up, and like, here you are. Okay. He's hyped All up right, already. Man, I He's understand. 10 and 1. Calm down. But definitely, um, we're going to be seeing Team Camby pushing in. This is definitely looking extremely good for Team Moshcrop. I do not see how they're going to be getting themselves out of this one, unless, as I said before, they pull some crazy team fight out of their uh, pockets. I don't see. Um, yeah, I don't see much of a uh, win and a full Baron team with two Baron Super Minion Waves. This is, yeah, definitely this is not, not looking at Team Moscow. Team Moscow's last send is definitely right now. He's going to be finding it's Thresh. He's going to be finding that Q, but he's not going to be taking it in. He wants to play the slow. Team Moscow. Oh my god, x Man getting the huge uh, engage. Oh my god. This is happening all too fast. I can't cast over this. Drowsy on the Hecarim. Hecarim is going to be falling, but no, he's going to pop that Gore Trigger and getting that huge shield from the stairs. This is the last stand from Team Moscow, and they make it happen. They're in this game for a little bit longer. They're going to be clearing out these minions just so that their next can... Nexus can survive, excuse me. Both their towers did fall during that fight, though. The huge engage coming out from x mate just finding Absolutely that four-man knockup. That was insane. And then Chris immediately falling up with his R. This is definitely huge for Moscrop. Kai'Sa, we're going to be seeing Kai'Sa uh, doing the dragon with Christopher right now. Um, that was definitely insane. This is what I was talking about. This is what they had in their pocket for the entire game. Let's see if they have any more of these um, crazy strategies or crazy engages in their pockets because they're definitely going to need a lot more than that mm -hmm. to bring this game back. Looking forward to it. They do have two big waves to form, ending a team lost Baron. They did. The gold they, deficit. That's, that's actually huge. They just lost Baron in like a second. That's actually, you know, that's how it happens most of the time. But like, you know, we just saw them completely rolling them. Yeah, um, leaving before. no survivors. But uh, no, right now, I think what I think what Team Moscow wants to do is they definitely want a major fight right now, but they don't want to play it too quickly. They want to play it very carefully. Mm -hmm. They don't want to throw what they just um, gained. Um, so they're definitely going to be playing it extremely slow, going to be defending and farming these super minion waves. As a uh, player, Roger Samson actually once famously said, early inhib is in fact a losing strategy because it just allows the enemy team to uh, farm super minions and get a lot more income. So. Honestly, if you're not ri listening to Roger Sampson, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Um, but yeah, definitely not a good strategy um, if Roger was the coach. But, uh, you know, Roger's not here right now. So definitely not a strategy that's going to be being heard uh, at the moment. 
but no, sure can't be, you know, sense. playing it a lot, really uh, a lot more carefully than before. before. Um, but yeah, you know, we're gonna be seeing that Q coming out from Zoe, but it's not doing as much damage because it did get uh, hit or tanked by the Thresh. You know, Thresh building up those resistances uh, over time. He does have the lock. It does have the, um, you know, completed support item. Um, oh, yeah, we're oh, definitely that. gonna be seeing. I what I think Team uh, Camby wants to do is they just want to close out this game as fast as they possibly can because after they're losing that m pretty major fight, um, they don't want to let the enemy team scale that much. But no, Thresh, not like just not going to be finding anything with that Q. Going to be getting completely picked off, but it's going to be Camille as well as the Hecarim on top of the Kaelin. Kaelin going to be falling. It's Diana alone with Mordecai's and Death on popping that Zonia's, but he's not going to be enough to keep him alive. x loot going to be completely getting annihilated by the AD carry. AD carry in the back line right now. He's just going to be Possibly getting a lot more Qs, a lot more Es. He's completely popping that uh, uh, Nautilus, my bad. Um, but it's going to be hiding in relay versus two players, and that's going to be the game. Another quadra kill for the uh, Mordekaiser. Going to be taking those inhibs down and closing out this game. Team Camby taking the game away from Team Mosscrop. Mosscrop not being able to come back, although they won that one fight. Um, in their base, but uh, Team Camby just gonna be closing it out. Thresh on his own right now. He does hit the Q. Oh my god, he wanted to he do some to crazy press. shenanigans with that flash, Maybe but it no, it's not gonna be enough. Team Camby taking the game from Team Mosscrop. Final score 32 to 23, down two in Hibs. That was definitely a entertaining game to watch mm -hmm. from uh, both points of view. Um, you know, what we did see was. You know, there was that crazy team fight coming out from X May, coming out from the Diana, but unfortunately, uh, they did not get enough of those fights and were not able to, or at least Team Moscow was not able to uh, take the game home. Um, but yeah, as I said before, Team Camby was able to just keep the leads they had and kept keep snowballing and uh, just close the game out. Um, that's pretty much all the thoughts I have. Any thoughts from you, Jerry? I think after taking a look at the gold charts, we can see that the Mosscrop top laner did in fact earn less gold than the Canby support, which a little bit interesting. But yep. yeah, definitely I mean, interesting. Definitely interesting. Today. Um, yeah, but unless uh, you want to have any closing thoughts, this has been uh, Kaiwara casting over the Team Canby versus Team Mosscrop game. And uh, yeah, I've been, yep, happy to cast over this game.